All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my gosh. Well, uh, you know, we, we used to say that we're talking movies. We used to say that we're talking movies, but now we're, we're not talking movies. But we do have the main people behind it, and that's, that's fantastic. Ron and Mean Gene. Gentlemen, how are you? Excellent. Thank Excellent. you. I missed you guys last week, man. I know. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was out of pocket. You were up north. Where were yes. you? Where were you? Grayling. Oh. Where the... Uh, you know, it's interesting about there, up there in, in that county, uh, the whole county has 54 people who've gotten sick. So, and it's, it's been uh, 54 forever. I mean, it's like not a problem. And uh, so you walk into a place like a grocery store and I, I got my mask and I'm like, you know, and, they're, and they don't. So <laughs> they're looking at me like I'm just some kind of kook. And I'm like, I thought I was going to get beat up. They're like, ah, oh, what are you? Oh, you must be one of them queers. You, you must not be from around here. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you something, guys. Macosta County, which is where I live, we've had 15 cases for almost a month now. Steady. It hasn't changed. Okay. And, and so, I mean, you don't, you don't see a lot of masks up here. People are just like, whatever. It's understood. So, understood. Now, um, Kent County starting to pop. Uh, you're looking at uh, every day is two or three hundred that that uh, get hit, uh, and so I mean that's that's uh, that's due to more testing now. Right? Yeah, that's a thing. You know, it could have uh, it could have definitely have something to do with it. It uh, oh boy, you know uh, I just heard the bad news, Ron. You might have heard this about the woodland. Did you hear about that? Uh, which uh, bad news about the woodland <laughs> is that? Well, you know. I had one of my listeners on my last podcast, and this is an unconfirmed, uh, that the Woodland is closing up shop. The Woodland Theater or the Woodland Mall? Uh, I think the Woodland Theater. But... <laughs> right. No, I, I'm sure the mall is not closing or, or folding. I mean, the mall is not open, right? I mean, the malls can't be no, open. No, 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 no. You're right. Um, so I'm not sure about that, if, uh, if that is – you know, that, that, that might just be rumor, but I, I didn't know if you knew anything about it. But you know what is starting to happen is, uh, is drive-ins. People are like, the, uh, is that what's, what's going on, Ron? I know, I know you're not officially affiliated, but what do you know? Uh, I know that uh, since the governor has still uh, put the stay home, stay safe uh, order, executive order in place until May 28, that nothing will happen. I'm pretty sure nothing will happen until after she gives that or changes that ruling or, or signals that there is a, a, you know, a crack like the landscapers and the golfers and the fishermen, you know? So where are you guys now in your brains? Has your mindset changed? What is your current mindset about uh, the stay at home order? Where, where are you right now? Go ahead, Gene. You're, you can be first. What do you mean? Where I already explained. Yeah. I mean, think up here it's we're right. I know, I but are you as usual? Are you are you kind of like all right? Let's get back to normal. Is that is that your mindset? Well, yes and no. I mean, it, we we never really altered it. I don't work anymore because the company I work for shut down for the time being. Yeah, Carla works from home. She's you know works five days a week. So we're just I'm kind of practicing to be retired. I mean, you know. We, did we see each other? The neighbors are all, everybody's good. We just kind of hang out because there's not that many of us up here. Ron, your thoughts? Well, back to normal is a long way off. And that <laughs> has to do with particularly the business I've most recently been affiliated with, where you gather in large crowds. And oftentimes you're in close quarters with a number of people. And and that's not just movie theaters, that's restaurants, that's uh, concerts, that's uh, theme parks, that's, uh, you know, there, any place that, that makes its uh, money off of bringing lots of people together in the same space is a long way off from being any, but anywhere near normal. And so, yeah, I can get that. Uh, there are places out there that are uh, able to open and act somewhat normally, but, but not everyone. Do you or will you go to a sporting event in the? I mean, let's say in the next year, do you see yourself going to a something like that? Well, it, it, it really depends in my mind. And again, I, I'm using the perspective of movie theaters. What will a sporting event with uh, 
fans in the stands look like. I don't want to sit next to somebody right on top of me. I mean, if you've ever been to, you know, a football game at Michigan Stadium and 107,000 people are in there and, and there's not even room for my skinny white ass, okay? Let alone <laughs> everybody that's packed into that stadium literally mouth to mouth. Uh, and, yeah. and, and so, you know, if they're doing – uh, stadiums or, or places of, you know, concerts and so forth where they, you can have some social distancing every other row, every other yeah. you know, six feet between parties. I mean, okay, I might do that, although I'm a little nervous about getting in and out of a place that's going to have thousands of people uh, ramrodding through the same door. Gene, what do you think? Well, have you have you've heard about Major League Baseball and what their plans are, right? They're considering What's, that. I guess it all depends on whether or not the players approve. Right. The players are looking at 4th of July to actually start like an 84 game schedule. It's going to kind of be geographic. So it's where, you know, all the teams that are close to each other play and then they'll have a playoff at the end. No fans. They'll be empty stadiums. So um, I don't know. I, 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 would I go? It, I would have to wait until everything cleared up. I'm, I'm yeah. Now yeah. I would, you I know, would, I, First of all, I wouldn't go if this never happened. But um, I, I think <laughs> – Okay, okay. Uh, but it, it, I think I – I think that the, uh, that the people, most people, will be so protective of themselves. Um, and because this is something we never considered before. We, we never really considered um, the – uh, being so focused on where we're touching and things like that. I think that people will kind of elevate their game and be extra sensitive about that when this time comes. I know that right now, I mean, like when I started, when this was like, what, two months now we've been at this, uh, uh, as recently as two weeks ago, when I would come home, I'd wipe off all of the groceries with Clorox, you know. I do that I, now. I don't do that now. I gave yeah, up. I do. I just, I just picked up groceries. I just did yeah. it like an hour ago. Wipe them down. And I, and I understand I, that. But I, I guess my point is I'm getting comfortable again. Yeah. And I think that that's a process. So, well, let yeah. me ask you. Let me ask you, Eric. So come fall, the Griffins are going to start back up again if they do. Are, and they call you. Are you going to go back and work? Same uh, with basketball. Are you going to go back yes. and work? You will. Yes. And I think that, um, and I say that assuredly, it's a little different with me because I'm kind of, I mean, I'm on press row or in the, um, in the score, at the scorer's table, I am around people, Yeah. but, but I am around people. I've got the score. I've got the timeout coordinator. I've got the penalty box coordinators. I got the players. Plus We're you're going around. in and out. I mean, in and out, yeah. like Ron was saying. Yeah. So, um, you know, I won't shake hands. I won't touch. I'll, uh, I'll do this. And, uh, I'll wear my mask when I can and I'll uh, hand sanitize and try not to touch my face. Well, and, one, and I'll, and, and one more thing. And it, if I do get sick, I'm probably going to be okay. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you will. Fair enough. The odds are with you and maybe the force is with you too. Uh, but Gene, back to the uh, MLB plan. Cause I know it's been, uh, it, there's been many plans out there from different leagues, but I still think uh, for any of these leagues, uh, whether it's players or people like Eric who are calling the game and statisticians and anybody that's walking in and out of a stadium that's part of the game, don't they have to test all these people? Won't you have to be tested? I mean, just one player gets sick, and we saw what happened in the NBA with Rudy Gobert. We're shutting down the league. We got one player who tested positive, and they shut down the league. Well, and again, as you know, the, the, the job that I do, I do television for MMA events all over the country. And they were thinking of doing, you know, doing just holding the events without crowds. But the guy who owns it is like, no, because everybody who goes into that building is going to have to be tested. And the cost of that is just because there's no income at the door. There's no income at the concession stands. It's, it's cost prohibitive to run them. So, they need, yeah, yeah like, they need to have the technology where it just scans, the, like everybody sits down and then there's the big scan and on the jumbotron, everybody's green. And then whoever's red has to leave. Grab them and throw them out. Well, can't they do it like uh, at the airport where you got to go through the scanner? You know, you just walk through a scanner and it like kicks you out like the can. Put your that, arms up in the air. Yeah, yeah. you know, even if, it's it, just, even if it's just theater, I don't care. Just, 
just say Scanny on the Jumbotron. And then they got a couple plants in there, like Ron will be there and Gene will be there. They'll just grab and throw them out. All right, we're clean. Yeah, right. <laughs> get back at it. Quick, uh, so, let me yeah. get a quick side note on that, on, on sports now, because I've been kind of jonesing for, you know, hockey and baseball on TV because it's gone, it's done. Uh, but I just realized this the other day, thanks to Fox Sports Detroit, ESPN, and uh, NBC Sports, I, I've watched the Red Wings win four Stanley Cups. I've watched <laughs> the Pistons win two national championships, the Tigers a World Series, Michigan two national championships. I'm good, man. I don't want the regular guys coming back anymore. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've, you've seen a dynasty, and they can, they can play the uh, 1992 no. divisional playoffs for the Lions when they well, uh, won that game. Which they did a Barry the, Sanders special, so I'm good with the Lions. Yeah, I don't, I don't know <laughs> what year you guys were born, but I'm guessing uh, what, uh, you know, the, I, think, I think the last. Uh, this is the year um, I was born, 57. Yeah, yeah, 57. So that in 1992, that's the only real success we have to gauge of your beloved Detroit Lions. So, uh. Well, that's it. So, but I'm good. I mean, you know, those guys don't have to. I'm good. Just uh, good. Mr. Gene, I noticed you have a couple of acoustic guitars behind you. Are those, uh, do you play regularly? I do, but I'm not going to still even ask. I don't want you to. Oh, because okay. uh, oh, really? I, the why reason not? why I bring it up is because, oh, now he wants me to ask. Him. <laughs> the reason why I bring it up is because it seems like uh, I was watching on Wood TV 8 and uh, Casey Jones is doing the news from his home and he's got a guitar behind him. It seems almost like a thing nowadays that anybody who's on these Zooms there's always a guitar behind him. So I got one. Now, I don't know how to play it, but I'm considering just setting it up, you know, uh, behind me. And I've got a listener who's a guitar teacher in Maine, and he wants to teach me how to play or at least give me lessons via Zoom. So that might be something that's, uh, that's developed. That would work. Well, I, I'm not doing that. I moved the computer because the window is here. And yeah. it, the lighting is – otherwise, it's just before. It's, I'm in the same room, but it's it looks just – good. Yeah, looks good. I, I, now, do you, do you have an electric guitar, too? I do not. I just have the two acoustics that I play, and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm happy. You play like Joan Baez songs and I Cat Stevens. Play. I do, I do the, old, the classics, you know. I do some uh -huh. Stones, I do some Beatles, do Rod Stewart, do a little bit of everything, some Jack so Johnson. You sing and play at the same time? Not if anyone's around. Oh, man, we got to see that. We, the no. audience would just love that. You have to come uh, up to a bonfire if you want right. that. Ron, <laughs> any uh, musical talent for you? Yes, I do play the guitar. As a matter of fact, uh, hey, even though, uh, even though uh, not regularly, and uh, and and I remember being, you know, high school garage band material. I think we may have talked about this. You yep. know, CCR cover band oh, yeah. back yep. in the seventies, and you know, a couple of those kind of tunes. But it, 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 it I would not be comfortable performing. Uh, no, no, internet no, no one wants you guys to perform. <laughs> but I guess the question is, have you written love songs for your significant others? Uh, past no. or present, past <laughs> or present, at least one. Lo hey, honey, I wrote this for you. And, you know, I like, wrote a hey. song about my dog. Uh -huh. I have a, we have a. Is it named Boo? Hound. We have a oh. dash hound. And the song is called My Hairy Spotted Wiener. And it's a great, it's a, I'm telling you, I wrote it while I was sitting in the hunting stand about 10 years ago, and it's a classic. <laughs> no, 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 man, no, no. Dude, you could have sold that to Ray Stevens. He would have I'm covered that. You, it's, it is. It's a classic. Gentlemen, I want you to know that one of my sponsors is a company called Horizon Hydroponics. Uh, they've actually been a thing for like 20 years. So here they are, and I was just making that gesture. And uh, next week, we are launching the first ever Zoom Growers 101 with them. So oh. I want you to spread the word amongst people who might be interested in something like that, who would want to join me and ask a question to the expert. And it doesn't have to be growing cannabis. You could be growing tomatoes. People do grow uh, vegetables indoors. Happens once in a while. Uh, but... <laughs> So I just wanted to throw that out there. What's right. the name again? Uh, the business is called Horizon Hydroponics, and we're going to do a Zoom Growers 101 clinic with them. How come so, they're not on your wall? They are. Where? Uh, you oh, can the see the side of it. It says oh, right. 10. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I've got the camera kind of zoomed in in a funky way, so some, oh. of, the, some of the sponsors you can't see. But. All right. 
That's fine. There they are. You know what? I I really hope to improve upon my deck garden this summer, uh, growing tomatoes and beans and a couple other things. So I I could use all the help I could get, even you know thinking yeah. about my little deck garden. Right. Right. Okay. So all what right. is that again? Uh, I haven't said it yet, but I'm looking at Thursday, probably 6 p.m. Tomorrow or next? next I'm sorry. Uh, I should give you right information. A week from Thursday at 6 p.m. So we'll right, the 21st about again next week. Yeah. So you let me know, and I'll 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 bring them in, and they can ask questions. You know. Okay. Cool. I like so I, I got a question. Uh, uh, I was just r trying to bone up on the latest stimulus package that's uh, uh, going around. And, and, and maybe, you, maybe you've been talking about this already, Eric. Is, are, are we going to get more checks in the mail? Or what, what's this new? Well, what's happening? You know, you have a $3 trillion, which is incredible, stimulus package. Ain't gonna and, work. Ain't and, going. and every time you hear, I hear these numbers, I'm like, my God, why, why does it, why, first of all, I'm worried it's going to run out of money. Where is uh, this money coming from? Yes. Yeah. And then the next thing is um, that, that, that may pass the House or the, uh, the uh, Senate, Democratic-led, but no, there's the no House. way that's going to pass the House because okay. of the, the, the fiscal conservatives that are there. That, that'll never see the light of day. Wait. And then, so my guess is, and, and the way it's written is $6,000 per household. That's a lot of money. And I uh, now I don't know if that's, I mean, if that, if they can swing it, well, hell, I'm all for that, whatever. <laughs> but I don't think that that is going to happen because it's just ridiculous. And, uh, and I, my gut tells me the Democrats whip that thing up with no rhyme or reason. And then it gets shot down in the house. And then they turn around and say, see, they don't support America, right. which is awesome. usually how it goes. So that's yeah. what I'm expecting. Mm. Uh, but you know, who knows? Well, right. And, and maybe there's some different version of that that does get passed. I mean, there's certainly talk about part of that money going to States. And I know the States have all been going holy cow, we're going bankrupt. We need, you know, support and, and hospitals and, and the small businesses, again, that never got a chance the first time around. And so oh. I, maybe, there's a, maybe there's a version of that $3 trillion that gets oh, yeah. some of us uh, and, and those that's particularly in need what they need and help. Well, you know, you have the long list of businesses that um, – you know, with, with that first stimulus package, I mean, that was set up for uh, the corner bar in Rockford. Right. That's what right. that was supposed to go to because, uh, and, and the idea behind it was with the 20 people that work there, them all being flushed down the toilet, being repeated 800,000 times throughout the country is the backbone of the country. Exactly. And so that's what that was set up for. And then the, the, the big conglomerates, though, that found the loophole and then applied and got the money is just so bad. And the only, okay, here's the problem with that. A lot of these companies have turned around and given it back only when they were busted. There right. was a local a company restaurant, a local restaurant company uh, that employs tons of people at different Wendy's. They own the Wheelhouse downtown. They own uh, Twisted Rooster, I think it's called. And they got almost $22 million of that stimulus money. And then uh, after the light was shined on them, then the world is like, wait a minute. You guys, you, you, there's no way you can be broke, okay? There, there's got to be a way you can figure this out. They, 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 they tapped all the money, and that happened time and again. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Sure. I heard those stories. The Los Angeles Lakers had to turn oh, yeah. the money back in, right? The Lakers are broke. They Come need on. some extra money. And and I like how they're like, oh, well, we're doing what's right. You applied for it in the first place. You had no business. That's You're guilty enough. Even if you give it back, they still look terrible. Exactly. So, yeah. So, hopefully, the people that deserve it get it uh, out of this package or somehow and and yet I'm seeing all those stories about restaurants that are closing. I mean, not, some of them are shutting down. Many of them are closing stores. You know, that's, I mean, the laundry list was like, what, did steak say shut them all down? Uh, Shake Shack. Apple are you talking about Shake Shack? No, it's Steak oh, and Shake. Okay, okay. I think they're closing their whole 
they're all chained down. And even some of the big ones like Applebee's and IHOP and Pizza Hut's, they're all talking about closing hundreds and hundreds of stores. And they might have needed to, you know, wean or, or, or chop a few of the underperforming locations out. But we're, we're going to see a much smaller footprint on yeah. some of the big chains now. I just don't understand this, though. I mean, how long? It's been so long. I mean, it hasn't been, been that long in the grand scheme of things. How can these companies that make uh, uh, millions and millions of dollars with CEOs that make millions and millions of dollars, are you telling me one month of, of desperation and, you, and, and the whole thing blows up? Doesn't make sense. No. It doesn't. No. Well, some of them have obviously not been making it. Like Quiznos, you know, the Quiznos chain, yeah. they've been struggling for years. And now so, they're saying, you know, we're, we're just going to bag just a, almost half of their locations. So yeah, I, not all of them have been that profitable, but yeah, that is what I've been hearing. Right. Yeah. So they're, they're using this as the, it's almost, it's a little bit excuse like, you know, uh, it's almost like they have a great reason to close. I know radio's doing that. You, you look at any radio station and it's, it's uh, you know, five days into the pandemic, they're like, well, we got to wipe out 99% of our air staff. You know, they got one guy on all the radio stations yeah. and it's, it's radios in desperate time. If you were to look at the stock of radio stations now, Intercom, which is CBS, it's trading at like $1 a share right now. Yeah. Almost a penny stock. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, 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 Cumulus is at three dollars. Uh, uh, Town Square is at four dollars. iHeart's floating around five or six. And these are two of those three companies just emerged from bankruptcy. Yeah. And and reorganized and re-entered into the market at like ten, fifteen, twenty dollars a share. Zonk, just like yeah. that. I don't you know understand what? it. Yeah. Well, it, it's 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 a crazy world, obviously. And and speaking of stock shares and in, in your business and in. in in the theater business, uh, the AMC theaters, which has that uh, theater up on Alpine Avenue, yep. uh, and they're the biggest uh, chain of theaters in the world, the rumor is Amazon is going to buy them. And their stock went up 42%. Uh, uh, a month yeah. ago, they were claiming they were going to go bankrupt, and then they raised $500 million in line, uh, uh, to line uh, up uh, debt reduction. And now, <laughs> now they think Amazon is going to buy out the AMC theater chain. Wow. But it's got, you know what, this is going to, um, uh, all of these businesses is just kind of survival of the fittest mode right now. Who can get, who can get pushed through to the other side Yeah. and then yeah. assess, all right, now we got to, now we got to start to rebuild it. It's going to take years. It's going to take years. And, and it's like we've talked about, especially uh, businesses that rely on mass amounts of people coming through their doors. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that's going to be a long time coming, but uh, uh, you know, you got to take baby steps and be sure, you know, schools, uh, churches, Eric, would you go to church, uh, you know, a church service if you, they open their doors? I mean, how um, does that... yeah, I think again, uh, with all the things we've discussed earlier, space to part, I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm not going to shake anybody's hand. I'm going to uh, keep my hands in my pockets. I think I could. I think I would. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. So, and I think it's coming. I think uh, very, very soon it's going to be a there's nothing more we can do. And, and frankly, it's worked. In Michigan, a month ago, we were talking about this huge balloon of illness, number three in the United States. Uh, she has squashed it so that uh, people are upset. But look at the numbers. You're yeah. seeing three or 400 people a day get sick. It's worked. Yeah. And now, and she's also, she's also uh, when she let those recreational things happen, she let the lawn cutters back to work three weeks ago. This week, manufacturing, real estate went back to work. She's, this, is, this is exactly what she wanted to do. Yeah. So well, love it or hate it, it's, it's worked. And I so, hope the knuckleheads who are going to Lansing to protest tomorrow, if that yes. actually happens, I hope they leave their, are they going to have to leave their weapons at home for crying out loud? Is not, that not yet. Not yet. And, uh, and that, that's all, you know what? The, these guys are knuckleheads. You're exactly right. And that's what makes them happy. So you let them in, they scream, they yell, they make it worse. They go home, they drink, they forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was talking on the podcast. They should let them do it again and then get all the good people out of there and have the Blue Angels drop bombs on them. <laughs> a little A-10 A warthog action on their ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gene's like, I don't know, man. 
The comments on the show are not indicative of those of the station. I just oh yeah, sorry, I forgot about it. That's all me. It's all no. I I agree. We I, right. hopefully Nobody it doesn't get weird tomorrow. It won't. It won't. All right, gentlemen, that's it. We're out of time. Gene's got things to do. I love you guys. Anything else to wrap up, Gene? No. Next I hope we'll hope everybody back. stays safe. Uh, we'll uh, hopefully we can, can we do a pre Memorial Weekend podcast. Maybe there'll be something to talk about next yes. week. Okay? Yes. Yes. And Rod, we won't see you at the movies. Okay. Happy holiday. <laughs>